Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Ladies and gentlemen, start your emulators. This is time for another episode of Retro OS. And probably the biggest review I have ever written. The data posting is a major milestone for both myself and the people around me who knows me personally. To commemorate the occasion, I review a classic Game Boy Advance title that I played the days running up to the accident and its immediate aftermath. Is this game a classic or should this game be long forgotten? Well, without further ado, let's find out. August 2004, I took a 60 to 100 foot fall off Greening Castle, with my body making contact on with the cliff edge numerous times on the way down, which leaving me with a lot of horrific injuries. For more information, I have left a link to a Daily Mail article describing what happened in the video's description and this blog post. So I was given a 10% of survival. Even today, I still can't quite fully understand how I actually survived the ordeal. But let's not get too carried away with details on what's happened. Let's get on with this review. Nintendo Corporation's Pokemon series is one of the biggest juggernauts that the company has in their portfolio. The series started in 1996 with the release of Pokemon Red and Blue, or Green in Japan, for the original Game Boy. Even in the franchise's infancy, it sparked a worldwide phenomenon, with the publisher Nintendo and the developers Game Freak pushing this franchise as far as it could. With an insanely popular TV series which came to a conclusion in September 2023, with the occasional movie spin-off to boot, which follows the events of Ash Ketchum who left his hometown of Palette to embark on a long journey to be the very best like no one ever was. Another big element of the franchise which brought to the table in the late 90s was the trading card game developed by Magic the Gathering creators Wizards of the Coast. It practically much, it practically much took over the skills worldwide. Seriously, I remember an incident which happened in my primary school where an actual fist fight broke out between two of my fellow students over a certain rare card. Although I can't remember the specifics, I certainly remember the scrap itself actually taking place. Anyway, again, I digress back to Pokemon. During the time there were a lot of cult classics being released by Nintendo in the late 90s. An example of this is Pokemon Stadium for the N64. By the way guys, fun fight for you guys. Did you know that the original Pokemon Stadium contained a peripheral which plugged into the back of the N64 controller. If you own this peripheral and a copy of the original Pokemon Red or Blue, you can then import the team that you had from the save file that was stored on the cartridge and use it in the Pokemon Stadium itself. And using the GB tower, you could continue on your Pokemon journey through a TV screen. This particular title was released for the Game Boy Advance on October 21st, 2002. However, the game itself was re released in Europe until the 25th of July, 2003. The game is set in a whole new region, the Hoenn region, which was specifically designed by the developers to mimic Japan's island of Kyushu, rotated 90 degrees. You play the part of either a male or female Pokemon trader. We started out in the small town of Little Root. A Suica organization is trying to use the power of an ancient dormant legendary Pokemon that's Groudon or Kyogre to eradicate the world of all humanity. It is up to you to travel around the Hoenn region, defeat all gem leaders, then onto the Elite Four, putting a stop to Team Aqua or Team Magma's plans and completing an encyclopedia of all 202 Pokemon, the Pokédex, all at the same time. Master Pokemon are the ready? The accessibility scores are as follows. To kick things off, visibility scored a 9.5. While there are no colorblind modes available in this game, there is very little need for one. There are no color-coded elements that can cause an issue for a colorblind player. Continuing on with this forward momentum, audibility gave it 10. Next up, audibility gave it 10. Due to the size restrictions of a standard Game Boy Advance cartridge, 
there are no spoken dialogue present in this game. All dialogue is text based. To be fair, there are no games in the Pokemon series that have any spoken dialogue present. Losing some form of momentum and mobility given then, again due to the side restrictions of a standard Game Boy Advance cartridge and the game's age, there are no alternate control layouts available in its interface. However, all battles are turn-based, which gives you more than enough time for you to really think through your moves before you make them. Last but certainly by no means least, gameplay has got a sky height 11. Out of all the Pokemon games I have played, this game is an instant classic. With over 200 Pokemon to capture, this game has plenty lifespan. What makes this game stand out is the first inclusion of two on two Pokemon battles. In previous games of the series, only one Pokemon can be sent out at a time. This brings a lot more tactical depth into a battle as you consider of which types of Pokemon you are sending out in accordance with your opponent's Pokemon, thus playing one Pokemon strength to tie the other weaknesses. Another unique feature of the game was was up to four consoles that can be linked simultaneously for training and PvP or player versus player battles. Also, certain Pokemon had passive abilities which came into play as soon as they were sent out. For example, Pokemon can invoke certain weather patterns such as rain and heat waves which directly affects Pokemon stats during a battle. So this game holds a lot of sentimental value for me. On that fateful day in 2004, I had a Game Boy Advance SP in my treasure pocket, and the cartridge slot was my copy of Pokemon Ruby. I remember the day that my mom bought me a replacement console and bringing it in to her hospital where I stayed. One of the games I remember playing on the hospital bed was this classic. So it can be said that the game was my only form of entertainment while rebuilding mental pathways due to my experience with this game. I also remember the time where I was transferred from my local hospital to an intensive rehab centre in Peebles, Edinburgh. I played Pokemon Ruby the entirety of the way. In summary, Pokemon Ruby is in my honest opinion one of the best Pokemon games I have ever played. The developers harnessed the extra hardware power of the Game Boy Advance really well. The game is looking excellent even for a portable console. When using a DS Lite, the game is running as smooth as silk. Although a copy with a fully functioning battery is expensive, the whole experience is worth every single penny. If you own a Game Boy Advance or DS Lite, I seriously cannot recommend this game enough to you. And the overall score is 98.75%. This is Sparta Commander 1990 setting off, and I'll see you guys in the next review.